We settled Mars over a century ago. Making this dusty rock our home wasn't easy, but the promise that led us across the void was freedom. Something my family's bled for many times. Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again, introducing you to my Red Faction Insane Difficulty video walkthrough. And here we are once again as Darius Mason, the only difference is, is now we have our glorious guns out and uh, we're taking on these little dudes with the impact blow and the grenade guns, so here we go in the Marauder base, uh, advancing forward to destroy some generators. And there's some kind of strange stuff that happens on this video, for instance right now. I contemplate reloading because I didn't deal with that group of enemies very well. And because this is a guide, I like to try and put up the strategies that work the best, in my opinion, and the ones that I've found. And uh, I don't know what I was thinking right there, so I ended up... End I, I start to save, and I'm not too sure why I did that, so... It's been a long time since I had the game, so whatever the hell was going through my mind is not currently circulating, so it could be physically anything. But, we're at the upgrade station once again. And uh, I have quite a lot of stuff now that I can mess with. I've got 1,700, so that's one and a half upgrades. But I decide not to use it because, I don't know, the upgrades are not even a necessity. You could probably do a no upgrade run of this game and I have no trouble whatsoever. But this bit coming up is quite challenging because these platforms that we're standing on do get destroyed and uh, we're stood over lava. The only time where you are on a platform that will not break is when you're on solid stone. So be very careful in all of these encounters because you'll have people trying to shoot at you, you'll be shooting at them, and uh, if the platform goes through, it's game over every time, so as long as you're aware of that, you shouldn't have too much shit going on. But the spawns are both there, two of them on the left of you, and you can deal with them as, as you've been dealing with them through the entire game. I like to hit them with an explosive weapon before they spawn so I can generally clean them all up in a nice little cluster, but it doesn't always work, as uh, you've just witnessed. It's just a case of taking it slow, destroying the, the biggest threats. This is the Singularity Cannon, and this is probably the best gun on the game. Aside from all the bullshit ones you can get with the cheese. And uh, the reason I say this is because not only does it do massive damage to the environment and to enemies, but it also immobilizes them for a good 10 to 15 seconds while they swirl in its black hole. Because effectively, this gun fires a black hole that implodes and uh, it does some sick damage. So, this is a gun you're going to be wanting to keep on you at all times. Uh, especially for like the last boss area and, and for various other sections, it's going to save your ass on many occasions, it did mine. But, just keep moving through these areas and doing your Red Faction thing, because I'm going to talk about some other stuff and give some updates, because it's been a while since I've, I've uploaded a video in, in any real haste. And the first one is, uh, I'm now back on at university, I'm you know, getting hit hard by level 3, or year 3 should I say, uni work. Uh, I've took about five or six modules this year, and each one of them has pretty much given me an assignment with a deadline to be doing right now, slash to be doing for the rest of the year, so uh, that's the reason why the videos are going to slow down, but it will still be coming, so don't worry about that. Uh, I'll probably talk more about my, my uni deadlines and stuff, just to, to fill some people in on, on separate videos, because I don't want to bore people with my life details if they only come here for, you know... Stupid stories about, you know, erectile dysfunction and, and ligers and stuff. But, yeah, there's a lot a lot of shit going off right now. And I did want to start my rage guide today, but just my fucking luck. Uh, they didn't send it me early. I could see a couple of my friends who ordered from the exact same place at the exact same time I did. And they're playing it, so it just goes to show that I'm probably one of the least lucky people you'll ever meet. So, you know, I just have to kind of grin and bear it, which... Sucks massive dick, I swear I'll never use the service again, and I always do, it's just how I work. But, I will be starting it tomorrow, and with the looks of it you can start directly on Nightmare, which is cool, because I'm looking forward to playing that game, it should be pretty challenging. And uh, I should, in theory, if I get it tomorrow, I'll beat it to the same day I'm open, depending on how long it is, it might take me a little longer. Then uh, on the Sunday, I'll start recording the guide, and what I'll probably do is, as soon as I've done maybe three or four levels, three or four chapters... I'll, I'll turn it off, I'll, I'll immediately go to doing the editing and doing some commentaries just to put some videos up for you. I haven't quite sussed how to use my uh, university internet connection again because it keeps failing and being all sorts of shit. And I don't know if that's because the, the tech guy who works at my uni has, has cottoned on to people, you know, stealing bandwidth and using it to upload and what have you. Or if it's just, you know, a, a change to the firewall that's, that's making it really sporadic. But suffice to say, uh, I got... 
uh, on the Fallout stuff, I started uploading one and it did it in about three minutes, but it was still processing and usually when I uh, exit the screen when it's processing, it does it automatically because it's already uploaded and I'm not in any trouble, but for whatever reason this time, uh, it failed it, so I had to do it a couple times and it really fucked up and I kind of gave it up as a bad job. Uh, this room right now is kind of hard. And the reason it's hard is because there's one of the, the boss berserkers running around causing all sorts of chaos. And you have a bunch of those invisible guys with the fucking, you know, lasers that come out of them and they fire that giant projectile at you. And the only reason it's difficult is because whenever you fight those invisible laser dudes, they put up that, that like, gassy, foggy mess that sometimes obscures your screen. And a lot of the time you can't see what you're doing because it's all shimmering and he's running through cover and there's just explosions aplenty. But... The, the best way I've found to do this is to run around in kind of like a, a clockwise, you know, circuit of this area, avoiding the, the big berserker guy and killing as many of those invisible lazy dudes as you can. And you'll notice I'm in some shit right now, and I've got people all around me trying to attack me, but the luxury of this is, if you do the roll, you are so much more mobile and the enemies have such a difficult time killing you. And uh, luckily enough for me, I managed to kill the berserker on that last singularity fire, and all I have to deal with now is these little dudes that are just a pain in the ass more than they are dangerous. But there you go, a challenging fight overcome quite easily. Uh, you shouldn't struggle at all with that one, especially if you're using the cheats or any of the you know special weapons that you can get and all that nonsense, because they just destroy people. It's unbelievable how, how ridiculous they actually are. But we're actually coming up to the section of the game that's going to get the most hammer, in my opinion. And the reason for it is, it's the only part of the game that you can't cheese with the cheese. And uh, there's, pro <laughs> there's probably a lot of you thinking, like, what do you mean by cheesing it with the cheese? Well, um, if you've not played this game, and I've not gone into it in too much detail in the early videos, I might have done so because this is probably one of the longest stretched out guides I've done. Purely down to the fact that a lot of good games came out, and this is not getting the hits that I would have liked. Uh, this is a fun game, this is a cool game, and there's a couple of really challenging and insane moments, but for the most, this is not going to get <coughs> one millionth of the views that the, the Gears of War guide is getting. Because it's not a game that people will struggle with, and if they do, there's a lot of ways to overcome this. And uh, one of them is uh, the salvage number that you see in the bottom right-hand corner of my screen that I've nearly got 3,000 points worth of. Uh, every time you get, I think it's about 4,000 or 5,000 salvage points, you can buy a cheat weapon. You can also buy uh, cheat statuses, like infinite ammo and stuff like that. So, if you're patient and you've got a lot of salvage built up, you can buy pretty much your way through this entire game on its hardest difficulty, which is very cheap and very disappointing for the people that like to achieve it, but it's there for the people that don't want to waste that time. And um, a lot of people will be doing that strategy because at certain moments of this game, it can seem very difficult if you're not used to playing it and you're not used to the challenge, but once you get used to it, it's, it's very, very simple. And uh, the moment coming up with the barge is a on-rail section where you hold a turret and obviously all your infant ammo, all your weapons, all, all your bullshit that you use doesn't have any factor on if you survive or not. It's all down to, to luck and bullshit which is really disappointing if you ask me because the section coming up is very cheap, it's not very fun and uh, it's just one of those things where you're going to die a whole bunch of times until you get it right and if, as soon as you accept that the better it is. But all you're doing here is you're destroying the bridges You'll know when the bridge goes down because it'll completely get rid of that lovely red triangle, uh, red square thing and uh, you will get a checkpoint. But uh, just be careful when you're coming through these caves because every time you go through them there's going to be more enemies spawning and this is one of those moments where I actually start to run as opposed to killing everything. And uh, that, The reason for this is the, the levels coming up I'm going to be utilizing the running strategy through them all. and uh, It's good practice because this is nowhere near as, as intense as it's going to get. And uh, when I say intense, I mean intense. This shit gets batshit crazy. It fucking does. It gets super, super stupid. But just keep moving down here. And uh, we're now into October, which is great, because it, it means that all the television series that have all started up are now well well on the stride. So every, you know, every week, every two weeks, you, you get a new episode of them. And especially for things like Breaking Bad, which I just got into, and I've pretty much watched all four seasons and uh, caught up the, the actual air date of the show, so uh, I'm kind of conflicted in my uh, emotions when it comes to this because a good perspective is, yeah, I've watched it all now up to where it is and it's fucking awesome and I can't wait for the next section, but the bad perspective is uh, I can't just, you know, grab the next few episodes and watch them like that, which kind of sucks because now I have to wait like everybody else does and I am a really impatient guy with television shows. 
Uh, right there, you'll notice my screen went from having super damage to no damage whatsoever. And the reason for that is I did die, but there was a checkpoint bang where uh, I was running away from those all those enemies. And when I respawned back in on the checkpoint, all the enemies weren't there, and uh, it made it very easy for me. But uh, keep moving through these uh, crazy architectural palace base place to get to the generators. And uh, the generator room is actually a pretty challenging fight. Uh, the reason for that is there's a lot of monoliths, and I think it's monoliths, which are the big, you know, the big like fanged tower things. They look similar to something out of Brutal Legend, and uh, they they both enemies and fire shit at you. And there's about four or five of those in that room, and they're the only reason why it's even remotely challenging. But this section here is not too bad. He says defend the area, you will see a lot of enemies start to jump towards you, but you're never in any real immediate danger because a lot of them will stay outside of the room on the rocks and try and snipe you. The only ones that come close are these crap ones that you can just push away, and I do believe the invisible guys with the tree lasers. Which I should have said try lasers, but you know, I got lazy. So just keep, um, keep shooting them, keep doing your thing. Uh, they will jump around a lot. They can't get across the bridge though if you've blown it up. The only ones that can are the small ones that can jump and the, the ones that cling on the walls if you get unlucky. But if you start getting overrun, just move back into that little recess that you just saw me in and just keep sniping them with your, your rocket launcher. And uh, they shouldn't stand too much of a chance because once you've, once you've killed enough of them, once you've been here for long enough and defended the area as the objective said, uh, it'll get to the point where it just gives you the checkpoint and it'll move you on to the next part of the game. And there, there the force field has just come up which means that we've done the defense area now and we can turn back and we can run back towards where we came from and I do believe it might be one of those moments where we get to hold X and teleport somewhere don't hold me on that though I'm just standing here yeah we go now we can hold X and meet Karis thanks for watching guys I hope it helped and you take care now